Do you plan to become an Iron Man as you face your foes? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Well, it's going to be up to you. Do we get it? Got it? Yes. You're going to have to use the circular particle accelerator called the cyclotron. What's he doing up there? Science project. How do I make it strong? You have to implement gyroscopic stabilizers in the chest. Plate. Hey, buddy. So where's the big project? Volcano. I just had a wire mesh model, coated with paper mache, paint it over. Technology that makes you feel superhuman? Um, where do I sign in? That's powerful. An upgrade to Fios Quantum Internet. I love watching the movies of Iron Man. Unlike many superheroes who have supernatural powers, he is an ordinary mortal like us who relies on his ingenuity and science by creating an armor to ward off evil and give justice to the oppressed. Today's first reading talks about us wearing the armor of God. Unlike the nanotechnology that powers Iron Man's suit, St. Paul reveals to us what will allow us to defeat evil and not be oppressed by the devil and his invisible presence. And speaking of presence, this is the time of the year that many organizations plan for the coming year. In a pandemic situation that may not go away yet, even if a vaccine is found soon, the residual effects may linger on for another year or two. This means continued unemployment and hardship for many. That's why this requires careful planning by government and private entities. Have we sat down too to make our own individual spiritual plans? Or are our plans limited just to how we can stab off hunger and uncertainty? Look for new additional sources of income? Bring down the losses from our businesses hit hard by this pandemic? How to pay off debts and just to survive? For sure, this global pandemic has caused unfettered anxiety as we think about the future, and it is just right to plan to cope well in our secular world. Perhaps it is also high time to plan for our spiritual future, which may be the needed answer to our secular woes. This may be just what we need to cure our sleepless nights, the endless worrying that envelopes us, our uncertain gait and lack of confidence as we go about our daily chores. St. Paul himself was confronted with resistance to his plans and preachings. Just like Jesus, his enemies were not just those who opposed him outright, but he was up against an invisible dominion under the control of Satan. We too need to battle against our own demons, depression and anxiety, selfishness and greed, bitterness and unforgiveness, doubt and fear. St. Paul encourages us to draw your strength from the Lord and from His mighty power. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. This should be our spiritual plan. First, we must live in truth buckled around the waist so that we can counter the lies that the devil is spreading. Living in truth is not to pretend who you are not, telling lies to look good and blameless for our faults. Second, be righteous. Wear a breastplate. We turn away from sin and not shirk from facing our challenges behind our addictions to temporary pleasures such as drugs, alcohol, and pornography. Third, be filled with peace. Wear shoes. We should be peacemakers, as Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the peacemakers. We should not have a critical spirit, always on the lookout to put the blame on others, always wanting only what is good for yourself without considering the opinions of others. Fourth, have faith. Hold the shield. The devil will always try to sow seeds of discouragement, low self-esteem, depression, and test you to your limits until you give up. The shield of faith will block any doubt, fear, and anxiety you may have. Fifth, we must cover our minds with the salvation of God. Wear a helmet. If we are to attain the salvation of our souls, we must follow God's commandment of love, especially those who are difficult to love, by forbearing and forgiving not just seven times, 
but 70 times 7 times, which means always. Sixth, pray to the Holy Spirit. Hold the sword. He is our guide, our protector, and slayer of that which keeps us in bondage from receiving the power of God. That is why St. Paul ends this set of passages with prayer that should envelop us all of our waking hours. All told, God's Word, the Holy Eucharist, our bread of life, our prayers will keep us not just afloat and steadily anchored, but also allow us to bring with zeal our faith for others to behold and be enlightened. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, help me to put on your spiritual armor that will allow me to defeat the schemes and deceptions of the devil. Let your Holy Spirit guide me today and always so that I may be filled with hope in your grace and in your saving power. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.